Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling here. Really appreciate you guys making some time to watch the video. I definitely never take that for granted, so thank you very much. And I've been wanting to do today's video for quite a while, and what we're gonna do today is have a discussion on there should be, if there should be a limit on how many rods that anglers can use in tournament competition. I'm gonna make the argument that there should be a limit, and I'll go into that in detail. I'll be curious to hit you, hear your guys' opinion on it too. But real quick before we get started, just wanted to give you guys the weekly reminder about our Fish the Moment Lake Map Breakdowns. If you guys are looking to learn more about a lake you want to learn more about, or if you're going to a lake you've never been before, it's probably the greatest resource you can have to find some good spots really quick and learn how to fish them. So check it out at fishthemoment.com. I'll put, include the link in the description here. Much appreciated. Okay guys, let's talk about this fraud limits. Um, you know, I, if you guys, you guys that follow the channel here, you know that I talk a lot about bass fishing becoming an elitist sport, which it is. It's sad, sad but true. It's becoming an elitist sport. Um, we've seen it's common now to have guys with fifteen, twenty thousand dollars at least of electronics in their boat. It's, in fact, it's probably more common than not. Um, and I think one of the things that doesn't get talked enough is how much money that tournament fishermen carry in their boat in rod and reels. Because one of the trends I've noticed, especially amongst the younger anglers uh, the last five years, is how many dang rods these guys have on the front deck. I mean, it is common anymore for them to have 20 rod and reel combinations out on the, on the front deck, you know, just to pick, pick up whatever they use. And depending upon what you're paying for those rod and reels, you're looking at anywhere between ten dollars to $15,000 worth of rod and reels. So, guys... That, in my opinion, that is just stupid and ridiculous that we've reached a point where we have to carry $15,000 worth of rod and reels and have $20,000 worth of electronics to fish a dang tournament. You know, back when I started out, it was common. Most guys, they didn't even own but six or eight rod and reels. You had a couple little flashers on there and it was affordable. A lot of people could fish. But now, you know, it's we what we've done, and we've talked about this before, is we've created this income disparity where there's a tremendous advantage to some anglers that they have over other anglers if they simply can afford it. Now, I don't, I don't know if the economy's booming so much right now that people can afford to have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment in their boat because it wasn't like that back in 1986, I can tell you for, for, tell you for sure. So the first thing about it, why I think there needs to be a limit is it creates more of a level playing field. Um, I want, I'll say right off the bat that I think that, and I'll explain this here in a little bit. I think that, that a tournament anglers should be limited to five rod and reels. That's all they should have in the boat. It, it, no spares either because they should have just five rod and reels. And what I'm, what I'm saying by that, I'll, I'll reference back to like golf, you know, the professional golf, uh, PGA, the professional golfers, they have a club limit. If they break a club too bad, they can't have spares. Uh, professional bowlers tour has a ball limit. You know, a lot of sports have equipment limitations as far as the numbers that they can have. What it does is if you limit tournament anglers to five rod and reel combinations, then you, you take a step forward to equaling that playing field. You know, there's a lot of people out there can afford five rod and reel combinations. You're talking about you know, two to $4,000 for five rod and reel combinations versus, you know, 15 to $20,000 if you have 20 rod and reels up there. So, you know, one guy that is getting into the sport or one guy that has a big family to take care of and can't afford it um, can have a more equal playing field than these dudes out there that are running $20,000 worth of electronics and $20,000 worth of rod and reels in the boat. So that's a good thing there. The second thing with that, is if you've only got five rod and reels in the boat, it creates a it creates a narrative within the tournament that doesn't exist now because it becomes strategy. If you if you're limited to five rod and reels, then you have to think very carefully about how you want to lay out and you approach your day. Sometimes uh, something you may have to make some type of a change, and you may have to, you know, you know, say for example, you brought four spinning reels and one rod for a top water in your day and it's not working out and you find out you can catch them flipping you may have to flip with your top water rod it makes for an interesting uh, uh creative outlet as far as for the tournament uh you know in itself it is as far as the narrative with that that's a good thing there and 
secondly, I just think that it takes a step towards simplifying the sport. And I think that we need that. We've got to take a step back and rein in this technology a little bit, rein in the, 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 gro the out of hand growth as far as what it costs to do that. And it takes us a step back to do that, which, you know, like I said, it, it levels the playing field a little bit more. Now, obviously, you know, it's sort of like the, with the electronics, this is gonna be a tough road to hoe because as long as you have uh, rod and reel companies, you know, sponsoring tournaments, the tournaments aren't gonna do anything to limit the sales of rod and reels, the same with electronics. That's why we have no limitations on electronics because the electronic companies, you know, would start, you know, griping about that. So it all boils down to money, uh, ultimately. You know, tournament fishing is very flawed. There's a tremendous amount of injustices and flaws in it. It's a great sport, don't get me wrong, I love it. I'm addicted to it, I have been for a long time. But being somebody that's been in the trenches like myself for almost 40 years in tournament, over 40 years in tournament fishing, you know, there, there's a lot of things that I'd like to see change that can, that can just make it better than what it is right now. So anyway, I just, I'd be curious for you guys to weigh in on that. What do you guys think? Do we need to have some type of a rod and reel limitation? I'm for five rod and reel combinations. That's all you get. You get five in the rod locker. You get five out on the deck. You know, I mean, five total. You can't have any spares in the rod locker and just go fishing. I mean, back, I, I remember back in the eighties and nineties, it's like most guys, when you saw them take out in the morning, they had two or three rods on the deck and that's it. And now we got, you know, 20, 25 rods on the deck. I don't think that's a positive step in the right direction. Like I said, it just, it pushes the sport more and more into the elitist category, which um, is not good for anybody. So let me know what you guys think. Be curious. Talk to you later.